Snoochy Boochies bit is. It's time to talk some Kevin Smith. Right now on Miscast Entertainment. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of makeup in the morning. Get to the chopper! Say hello to my little friend! I'm gonna make him an offer again. This is my job! You're gonna need a bigger boat. Welcome back, you Miscast Miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment. And today, we have back an alumni of the show from previous years gone by. Play content! Who is silent? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that, we'll keep that. That's what Kevin Smith would have wanted, I feel. Silent Bob. Perfect. Yeah, silent. Oh, there it is, man. Silent Bob. Yes, it's Kevin Smith today. We decided we were going to talk about one artist and their career, and we chose Kevin Smith because Kevin Smith has spanned at least my entire life and definitely Connor's entire life. Yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> mine. Yeah. yeah, I remember Kevin Smith back in the 90s when he first started with Clerks, man, and oh my God, was that just an amazing dude to come out oh, of nowhere. For Left years, field. I was really obsessed with Clerks. Yeah. From like 15 to 17, I think it was like one of my favorite films ever. I remember going on a school trip to Boston and I was bit, I was excited to go home because I'd ordered a Clerks DVD and that was going to be in the mail. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to go home so I can watch Clerks. Oh, sweet, man. When was that? What year? Oh, 2010? Yeah, I was, yeah, 2010. All right. Dang, you are young, brother. You are young. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting that because you write like a master. You're like the Shakespearean writer of the internet. The film is endlessly imaginative with a vibrant, warm color palette, architectural grandiose, emotional depth, a sympathetic cast who develop rewarding relationships, and importantly, all the excitement, suspense, and motivation that an adventure film is required to offer. As an adaptation, Treasure Planet succeeds at balancing faithfulness with originality, and as a film, Treasure Planet succeeds on almost every artistic level. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's another thing, like, nobody ever know. like, it's one of those things everyone always says, but I always think, they, like, when I see them written down, I'm like, this is written really badly, but nobody ever seems to agree, so it's fine. It's your delivery, you know? I mean, you can have yeah. something poorly written, but when you're a good actor in the voice, uh, it, it comes off awesome regardless. Well, see, that's another thing I always, when I l listen back to the recordings, I'm like, I sound really bored in this, but anyone else who I ask says the total opposite. Yeah, you have an inflection that's just addictive, you know? I mean, it's true. <laughs> I'll take that. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, man. So he's the owner of View Ask You Productions. And, uh, man, lately he's been diving into television. Um, yeah, he's done from, a few Flash episodes. Yeah, man, like CW stuff, like left and right. He's been out in Vancouver, like working with Grant Gustin and uh, Melissa Benoist. Like, relentlessly. I think Melissa Benoist is actually in Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Oh, is she? Yeah, I oh, think wow. so. I saw the trailer for that. I couldn't remember seeing it. Let me be blunt, man. I liked you better when you were silent, Bob. If you really want to be, I'm ready to blast your ass and kick you in the hater tots. Dude, um, speaking of, like, uh, people that are crazy in that movie. Jay, uh, Jason Mewes is looking pretty... Jason Mewes, yeah. Dude, he looks like a completely different human being in that movie. Like, He's, he looks... Yeah, he does. Right? I saw it recently on a video and I thought the same thing. He uh, apparently like lost all his teeth in his drug use and he had his whole re mouth redone and his jaw. Like Everything looks completely yeah. different. Like, Yeah, he does, yeah. It's wild. I'm not sure how old he actually is, Jason Mewes. He's, I couldn't guess. He's 45. He's only two years older 45. than me. Yeah. And Kevin Smith so is that 49. Means, how old would he have been in Clerks, if that's the case? Oh, geez, that was what, 1994 or 93? I can't remember. Yeah, 93 or 94, yeah. Uh, yeah, so if he's 45 and 93, 94, I would have been 17, so he would have been 19 or 20. Yeah, I was thinking he was really young in that. Crazy town. So uh, let's start off with just what everybody wants to know when they come to these kind of shows. Uh, what are your favorite Kevin Smith movies? Comment below with yours too, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, Connor of Play Content, top to bottom, favorite Ooh, movies. Top to bottom, that's hard. Well, you can uh, you can only pick three to five. It's you know we, otherwise we'll be here all day. 
I could probably, I could probably do top three. Uh, I think. Uh, I think Dogma is my favorite. Okay. Years ago, I would have said Clerks, but I think now that I've thought about it more, I do prefer Dogma. Clerks is second, and probably Chasing Amy is the third. So they're all within the viewer skew. Wow, man. Uh, we nailed it on the first. We agree. Uh, Dogma is definitely oh, his best film, in my opinion, as well. Uh, yeah. Top notch. Uh, for a while, I didn't think so, but recently i've started to appreciate it a lot more than i do clerks yeah man uh he actually sh i lived in pittsburgh when he shot that there and uh that was the one time i got to hang out with them uh he went to this little oh wow dive bar like in between uh scenes i guess one night i, I always hang out in the site the south side in this dive bar called d's and uh jason muse and kevin smith popped in one night just to get hammered and we were in there. My God. There's only like, it's like a tiny little English pub type bar, you know? There's only like 20 people and they're all yeah. locals. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, they and spent the they whole night in there. Up. It was cool. Um, second, I'm going to go with Mall Rats. Mall Rats, yeah. okay. Mall Rats. Uh, when that movie came out, man, every the fad was like staring at those pictures until you saw like the three. Yeah, the image. magic eye pictures, yeah. <laughs> until you saw the sailboat, yeah. <laughs> That had Stan Lee, so it's got to be it's got to be on That's the uh, that, yeah I know young Stan Lee so with brown bizarre, hair because he was like a fairly unknown filmmaker at the time and he's got a cameo from Stan Lee an epic cameo where they have like a heart epic, to heart yeah, like really good one he spreads his morals into the universe like it, yeah it was, he's got a full beard and finally I, I guess I'll go with Clerks also Clerks would be number three of the yes top oh interesting. Um, I would have put Chase and Amy up there if it was number five, because I think it would have went Jay and Silent Bob after that, then Chase and Amy. Yeah, I think my fourth would be Mall Rats, actually, if I had to pick a fourth. Oh, dang, all right. Mall Rats, uh, that had uh, Kevin Smith playing Batman. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. He's got a podcast, Fat Man on Batman, as Batman well. I've never Batman. listened to any. Uh, it's crazy, man. Like he he goes off on that show, and now he's got like an audience and stuff. Like, but in the beginning, it was just him and and his, I guess his best friend or something. What's that guy called? Um, I don't don't I don't watch it enough to know. Like, I'm not no, an avid I've, I've fan. never listened at all. I just know it exists. Yeah, I, I have watched like three or four episodes, and they're really good, you know. But there's just so much content, you gotta like pick and choose your battles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And especially now that he's got an audience, he's got like five podcasts as well. Yeah, he's got a few that are just audio only. Like it's um, Fat Man something, but it's not Fat Man on Batman. Uh, that's just audio only. Fat Man and Batman's on YouTube, and then um, he's got a bunch of other stuff. The dude's like nonstop. Is this is it actually Batman focused? Fat Man on Batman, or is that just a title at this point? I think he just like I think he just like rhymed it. With you know, because he was like really tubby with his jersey, and he just kind of yeah. was making fun of himself. Because yeah, I forget how big he was sometimes. Because in my mind, he's always been about my weight. But when I like watch a few of the older things now, he, he was quite large at one time. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, he had a heart attack doing stand-up comedy in yeah, recent-ish. I yeah, think yeah, not that long ago. February of 2018. Oh yeah, so recent, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, he dropped like 60 pounds and uh, changed his style from that jersey to uh, the sport coat. <laughs> yeah, the blazer and still got the still got the cap. Yeah, he's freaking awesome though. I mean, speaking oh, of yeah. Batman, like he writes a lot of the comic books for DC and stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and I've and he's done a few for Marvel. I think he's done a Daredevil one at least at some point. Yeah, he did a Daredevil, uh, Guardian Devil, and he did Spider Man. Uh, with um, Black Black Canary, I think it was. Black Cat. Spider-Man. Uh, oh, Black Cat, The yeah. evil that men do. Um, My God, that is the dream job right there. Dude, he, Sometimes he directs, sometimes he writes comics. Yeah, or like scripts for like superhero movies, because he was going to do yeah. Superman Lives for a minute there, too. Oh, with Nicolas Cage, yeah. he's going to be Superman. <laughs> yeah. He was going to write it. Who was going to direct that film? I think he was up for directing, but then he got... Like put into the writer's chair, and then oh, it, right. it just went to crap after that. <laughs> Tim Burton and Nick Cage sign on based on my draft, and I was kind of excited. I said, "That's that's kind of neat, you know." Fucking Tim Burton, Batman, and Nick Cage, you know. Fucking Nick Cage. <laughs> Tim Burton, once he signs the deal, turns around and says, "I'm gonna bring on my guys to write a script," and the Warner Brothers guys were like, "Well, what about the script we're developing?" And he said, "I don't want to use that. I want to do my own script." 
presumably a version of Superman where he has scissors for hands. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, never saw the light today. No, yeah, thank I God. I wish it had done, to be honest. Well, I, I would, I would like to to see like whatever they shot. They had to have shot something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, and they probably had the full script. Probably the full script somewhere or another. Yeah, I think it's online. I remember in, it wasn't that long ago, maybe the late '90s, early 2000s. I had downloaded it and read it, and it was freaking crazy, man. <laughs> it was literally the death of Superman, like with neon and plastic suits, and it was it was out there, man. Like it was. Yeah, it sounds like the Joel Schumacher things a bit with the neon and plastic. Yeah, right. But it was totally Burton, and it was when Burton was like still riding the high of like being the DC guru, you know. Yeah, was was he gonna direct Superman Lives, Tim Burton? Yeah, he was gonna direct it. Oh wow! Initially, I'm not positive how that worked out, but I know it just got canned something fierce. I I, I blame it on uh, Batman and Robin with uh, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I blame everything on that film. Joe Joe Schumacher, like. <laughs> He just ruined everything for comic book movies until Spider-Man came out. <laughs> ages, yeah, for ages. He killed it. <clears throat> and honestly, I wouldn't give Spider-Man like the time of day if it wasn't for the Matrix. Like the the Matrix kind of like got everybody into that superhero fad again. Yeah. Um. Oh, Blade was before the Matrix, I think, but I don't think many people really. Oh man, remember Blade, Blade was though. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I quite like Blade. I haven't seen it for years either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Batman thing he wrote was uh, the Widening Ga- J- Geyer. Widening mm, Geyer. Matt Redder. Matt, I thought you'd find that interesting since you, you're a Batman connoisseur. Oh, I'm, I'm a Batman connoisseur. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, let's hear about it. You just did uh, Hush. Yeah, I did Hush. Uh, I'll probably do Under the Red Hood next because that is one I actually really like quite a lot. I haven't watched Hush yet, but after watching your review, I'm like feeling. Yeah. See it. <laughs> a few people have said. A few people have said they don't think they'll bother now that they know the twist. That's not a twist to make it the Riddler, right? I mean, spoilers. <laughs> I know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Imagine that they come to a Kevin Smith video and they get spoilers for Batman Hush. <laughs> well, he, he writes a lot of Batman. I'm sure he'll be directing. He writes, it's still related, yeah. Still and related. I'm sure he'll be directing a few episodes of Bat Batwoman or Batgirl, whatever the hell that show is. Oh yeah, I saw the trailer for that recently. It's so bad. <laughs> I'm not convinced at all. Yeah, no. I thought that too. It's so bad. And it's very on the nose about the fact she's a woman. She's like, this suit would be perfect if it was for a woman. And then she's like, a man should never make credit for the work that's done by. A woman. It's like, all right, we get it. I know that, and the fact that she's literally ripping the dude off of all his stuff. Yeah, she takes saying. his his actual suit. Yeah, yeah and, the actual suit is. And his name. And his name, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Um, I hope it's better than the previews have been showing. I mean, especially with Arrow going off. I kind of fell off the the bandwagon with the CW stuff, but. I did a long time ago, actually. Yeah, it, it was. I might have watched like half a season of each and then just stopped. Yeah, it's. I like the crossover events. I think I I pretty much just watched those and then I watched the other episodes just to catch up in pieces. Yeah, but that's probably what I would do. Yeah, but I'm not like watching them. I just like I just like go to the end for a few episodes till I figure out what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you figure out what's happening. Oh. Ooh. Here's a, here's a question. What's up? What's your least favorite Kevin Smith film? If you had to pick a worst one. Oh, man. He doesn't have that many bad films. <laughs> like, oh. Um, I, I guess I have to go Tusk. Tusk? Yeah, I've never seen Tusk, actually. It's just so not Kevin Smith. Like, maybe that... Yeah, that's, what, that's the impression I got from the trailer when it was out a while ago. It's not that, like... You know, it's necessarily a bad movie. It just doesn't feel like a Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, you're actually the first person I know who said it's not bad because most people I know who watched it say it, they hate it. Really? Yeah. I guess yeah, it depends. I know a lot of people who are not fans at all. I guess it depends on where you watch it, you know, like or how you watch it. Because sometimes those kind how? of yeah, like sometimes those kind of movies are just good to, to watch on a Sunday when you're hungover or something, nothing else on. You're like, oh, I wanted to nothing see this. Nothing else on. Yeah, I'll watch Tusk. Yeah. Yeah, and then but then you're not like so invested in it that you're like, ah, oh, this sucks. <laughs> you 
know? I know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can just ignore it if you don't like yeah, it at that point. Like, the premise is weird. Some of the scenes are crazy. I'm all right. I'll take it. You know? Yeah, exactly. I don't think, though, because a lot of people say that they didn't like it because they didn't like the premise, but I don't think that premise would immediately result in a bad film. No. No, I, I think... I think it's straight up that they expected to see a Kevin Smith film and they didn't. Mm, they saw they this didn't. weird like art film from like what, was it A twenty four released that or something? Well, I didn't. I'm not sure actually, but yes, yeah, it's, it's not at all within his vein. No, no, he, he does lots of excuses for that movie. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, one I think does result in a bad premise: um, yoga hoses. Which I think might be his latest one, even now. Oh man! Like I, I've, I've heard of it, but never I never watched it. But I have no recollection or information in my head of anything about that movie. Like, so why don't you give us like a synopsis of? <laughs> I, I know apparently because a lot of the criticisms I've because I've read the criticism, never watched it. Apparently, it's basically like three separate films, and at one point there were these Nazis that are made of like hot dog meats, tiny Nazis. <laughs> what? I know. I know, like, I, it's kind of funny when you think about it, but I think if I was in a film, I would be like, oh, I've just lost any investment by now. Make the Kevin Smith version of that, the one that nobody's going to make. Yeah. And it means sometimes people will be like, dude, I don't like that. But for me, it means that, like, I'm being true to myself. And and it's like, if I'm willing to take the hit, like, I knew that going in. I don't make a movie like Yoga Hosers going, boy, everyone's going to love it. So I could either not make a movie at all, where I can make the movie. And I'm like, the downside is some people might be like, that movie sucks. And in this case, that was the majority. The upside is, from now until the end of time, I got a movie I made with my kid. He's spending too much time around uh, uh, Seth Rogen. <laughs> I know, yeah. I forget it maybe coming from Seth Rogen. That yeah. weird, yeah, because didn't he do a, that porno movie with him that Zack and Zach Mary? Zack and Mary. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot that was a Kevin Smith film until now. Yeah. Oh my God. That was another really freaking strange movie, man. There were a lot of scenes in that movie that were just straight up uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> yeah, I um, were any of his regular cast in that? I think uh, Jeff Anderson, I think, was the only regular cast member, wasn't yeah, he? I don't that know. One? I don't know. I haven't seen it in years, but uh, it just reminded me. It's been a while. When you brought that up, it just reminded me of it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, Seth Rogen. Like, yeah, because yeah. of the sausage party and shit and Seth Rogen's weird humor, and it seems to be like bleeding into Kevin Smith like a little bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> another film I've never seen, Sausage Party. What's your uh, favorite video you've done in the last 10, 10 weeks? My favorite video I've done in the last 10 weeks? That is a good question. Hmm. It's probably the Batman Superman movie episode. Oh, yeah, that was super awesome. But I think a lot of that was because of the engagement. Like, before I released her, I wasn't even sure, but it got quite a lot of views, which I didn't expect. Where are you Because I didn't know people knew that film that well, or that episode that well. It's not just that, man, but that was a huge... That whole series was awesome. All those series were awesome, man. I love that style. Oh. I, I really dig those, those old uh, late 90s, early 2000 series. Uh, they, they genuinely don't make them like they used to. No. But, like, I swear, I even said in the comments on that video, I swear that that was, like, an, the episodes, not a movie. But you said that they, like, put them together and, like, released it as Yeah, a movie. they compiled them and just called it a movie. Uh, but I didn't realize that until quite recently. I've always assumed it was just a movie. Yeah, so I guess that's all I got for Kevin Smith, though. I, I, I mean... He, he's been doing a lot of, like, interviews and stuff lately, and I'm definitely super pumped to see Reboot. He says there's more special effects in Reboot, Jay and Sil Silent Bob, than in Star Wars. In Star Wars? My God. Yeah, he says it. He's, he's owning that. You know, actually, now that I've been thinking, just in the view of skew universe in general... Jane Silent Bob might be my least favorite of those five or six films. Really? In the view of Skew. Yeah, I think so, yeah. It's like, the only reason is because, like, the Kevin Smith films I really like are the ones that do something other than being funny. And I don't think that one really does. That one, to me, seems the most mainstream. Like, the other yeah. ones that he. Yeah, it is the most processed, yeah. yeah. The, most... The, the other ones he does are definitely more, like, independent feeling and more, like, uh. Um premise driven yeah there's more depth like there's quite a lot of depth. even in clerks there's quite a lot of depth considering it's a really simple plot 
Clerks is a lot like a Tarantino film where it's literally yeah, based on dialogue. Conversation heavy, yeah. yeah. Uh, which isn't bad. That's, that's one of the great things about Kevin Smith's films is is the conversations that people have, like the interactions. Yeah, yeah. I like slice of life films as long as the characters are really good. Otherwise, they're just boring. But that, the characters are really good in Clerks, so it's fine. Yeah, and Jason Lee, man, without Kevin Smith, is like <laughs> he just falls off the map. <laughs> Same with Joey Lauren uh, Adams. I don't know what happened to these people. <laughs> no, I always confuse her with another actress who I keep forgetting the name of. Jennifer Tilly. I always confuse Joey oh. Lauren Adams with Jennifer Tilly. It's the voice. It's they, the voice. They both yeah, got squeaky voices. They have yeah. those high-pitched voices. <laughs> For sure. Well, you know, Chucky and Tiffany, they're that couple. They're, they love each other. They have a great passion, but they just can't stop killing each other. <laughs> I'm Joey Lauren Adams. And we're going to go through my IMDb page. They pick the shittiest picture they can find, and then you have to pay to have it change. That's how they're making their money. Well, all right, man. I think I'm going to wrap it up with uh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, the you, fat man on Bat, the formerly fat man on Batman. There we go. We should call it that now. Formerly fat man on Batman. <laughs> yeah, that's what it should be called now. Yeah, man, that would be cool, man. Do you have any announcements or anything you want to like get out there into the masses? Mm. Oh, I, I tell you something, I do like maybe even more than Kevin Smith films. Ooh. Miscastentertainment.com for Miscast Entertainment merch. <laughs> Why? Thank you. What's up with your merch? When are we getting some play content merch? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know whether I've got enough of a base to even really benefit from merch. You should make at least one shirt. I'll get it, man. I got one of Danny's I, I am tempted. I am tempted because I noticed in the Danny Mick video, you were wearing his t-shirt. and then it, So that is a good idea for a crossover. It's Just about everyone wearing everyone else's merch. Yeah, you were wearing mine in one of the videos. It was fun. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Do it. Do it I'll now. Do it. Because I've seen people with like 20 subs sometimes have got merch, so. Yeah, you could do that Looney Tunes thing you got with the play content yeah, in the middle. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm glad you noticed it was the Looney Tunes logo. Yeah, that would I've be cool. I've been waiting for someone to comment on it for ages. Like like your hair for the uh, Akira video. Of the Akira video, yeah, exactly, yeah. I didn't know I, I was like. Used to always, that used to be like my default style a few years ago. It's pretty pimp, man. I, I noticed it immediately. I was like, "Ooh, he's he's done his hair. Where's the gel? Like, he's busted out it, it the gel." Used to, I used to do it like every day. Yeah, only a few years ago. <laughs> it's a lot of volume. It's a lot of volume. All right, guys, you know the drill. Head on over to MissCastEntertainment.com and hook up with some merch. And if you can't find it there, then hit it up in the description. Also, hit up Play Content. His videos are awesome, his channel's awesome, and he can be found in the description below. And until the next time, I'm William Davis Moore, and I'm out. Peace. Be excellent to each other. Stop the motherfucking plan! Tell me you guys have no idea there's a new comic book movie being made of the old comic book movie you two are the basis for. That old ass star-studded piece of shit, that movie sucked balls.